Hi everyone and welcome back. It's Monday and we're starting off this week on the ninth day of March and what a weather note we're starting it off on. I hope you had a chance to get out today. You'll still have the warmer temperatures which are going to be pretty much on average on par where we should be but you have to pay to play and we're going to do that with rainfall from this point forward throughout the end of the forecast period. In totality we're talking about two to three inches of rainfall hopefully as it goes on throughout the week and not all at one time. A super slow moving system is going to set up and hang out and park itself over the viewing area for days on end. We'll update you on your forecast in more detail and talk about not one but a couple of uh, periods of heavy rain at least expected throughout the forecast and as I said temperatures holding pat well into the 50s and in fact I don't think just double checking don't have a single nighttime low below the freezing mark I've got one that flirts with it at 33 but other than that certainly an improvement still a little snow out there but very little to be seen in a very short period of time your forecast will be updated in just a few moments <clears throat> let's talk flu just real briefly we had the flu run through the house about a month ago. Everyone caught it but me for some reason. But everyone had a mild version of it because they all had the vaccine. However, Angie got it really good and it really hit her hard this past week and she was down for the count for almost a week's time. <clears throat> and I have not tested positive and I think just a cough and some other symptoms and it's been days now so I'm hoping that it's not going to be an issue. <clears throat> but you have to apologize. I've got two bottles of water and a, a cough or two expected throughout the rest of the, <clears throat> the show this evening. Local headlines in just a few seconds. Turning to elsewhere, though, the Kentucky State Police has confirmed that they received a report of a complaint involving some abandoned animals at an abandoned residence in Morgan County. They have found several malnourished dogs on Old Elam Road in Morgan County over the course of the weekend. Detective Donnie McGraw, Trooper Michael Murray, and Trooper Luke Goodwin responded to Old Elam Road in Morgan County on Saturday. Once they arrived at the scene, they say they found several dogs that were severely malnourished. They were all taken to the Morgan County Animal Shelter and are currently being evaluated medically. All we know at this time is that the case does remain under investigation. No arrests or charges have been mentioned as of airtime. The Kentucky State Police in the Pikeville Post says they're investigating a fatal collision in Pike County. It happened in the early morning hours on Sunday. The initial investigation indicates that 76-year-old Bobby Hopkins of Shelbyana, Kentucky was driving south of Marabone Creek Road when the vehicle he was driving left the roadway and then struck a tree. The investigation says that icy road conditions were believed to be a factor in the collision. He was pronounced dead at the scene by the Pike County Deputy Coroner. Information obtained at the scene also indicates to authorities that Hopkins was not wearing his seatbelt at the time of the, the collision and alcohol does not appear to be a factor in the crash, which is still under investigation. And a fatal ATV accident <clears throat> in Pikeville over the weekend. An initial investigation into that incident determines that 31-year-old Jason Wolford of Phelps was operating his ATV on Kentucky Route 194 in Phelps and when he attempted to make a left turn he drove the ATV across the road into the path of an oncoming vehicle. A Ford Mustang that struck his ATV head-on, Wolford was thrown from the vehicle, his ATV, he was not wearing a helmet at the time of the crash and was also pronounced dead at the scene by the Pike County Coroner. Alcohol does not appear to be a factor in that death either, which is also under investigation. A mining death in neighboring West Virginia in Wheeling. We understand one miner dead, two others injured, and a roof collapsed sometime around 10 o'clock last night in the Marshall County Mine Cameron Portal. A miner we know was airlifted from the scene to a trauma center, another taken by ambulance to an area hospital. All the miners that were inside the mine at the time were able to escape without injury, with the exception of those before mentioned individuals. Time for a water break. More headlines next. To get high speed internet on their state of the art fiber optic network for all of your home and business solutions, or to watch TV without a contract on over 200 digital channels with superb quality, or stay connected with family and friends with 24 7 telephone service you can always depend on, contact Foothills Broadband today. Or just click on their link to the right to find out how they're working to provide the latest in communications at affordable prices with exceptional service at Foothills Broadband. Our top McGoffa County headline this evening is that of a local fireman who has served dutifully for years on the Sagersville Fire Department, most recently as a lieutenant with the organization. 
who along with his wife and their three-month-old child saw basically everything they owned destroyed by a structure fire over the course of the weekend. An explosion alerted the couple to a situation at their residence, which they quickly found engulfed in flames. The scene was the Reisner residence on Johnson Fork. Also assisting was the North McGoffin Volunteer Fire Department, but to no avail, the couple lost everything. Uh, we had a fire call about 10 o'clock Friday night on Johnson Fork. We was a mutual aid uh, department for Bloomington Mountaineer Fire Department, uh, but it happened to be one of my lieutenants on my fire department, Stephen Reisner's house that w was fully engulfed in fire when we arrived on the scene. The uh, Steve Reisner and his wife, uh, sure was at their mother-in-law, Steve's mother-in-law's house whenever they hear an explosion and they got out to investigate and his wife called the call in. It was uh, actually something exploded inside of uh, his resident. Uh, upon arrival, the whole center of the house had already collapsed and, and it was fully engulfed the time we got there. His icy conditions, uh, we, uh, we, we had to uh, put up with ice uh, under the trucks. Actually, one of the trucks about slid over the hill uh, because of uh, trying to take off from the ice that was on the road. Uh, we wasn't able to save but a, a couple of little small items out of his house that was in the living room section. Uh, but uh, they've got a little uh, three-year, three-month-old baby. Uh, and uh, they saved nothing but what was on their backs whenever they was gone to the, the mother-in-law's house. Don't have any idea of the cause. Uh, he, he was having furnace issues. He had a furnace uh, person out checking the, the furnace out earlier that day, uh, but it didn't start in the area where the furnace was located at. So we're still trying to chase it down to, to see the cause and origin of it. Uh, Steve, this is the second term uh, with the fire department. He was with me about 10 years ago and he left to, uh, to take a mining job and uh, uh, the mine closed down so he returned back. I had a position come open and he come back and joined back with the fire department. He's, uh, like I said, is a lieutenant with the department. Very excellent firefighter. We just hate that he uh, lost everything that he, he's uh, accumulated in his adult life. And also, of course, many of those irreplaceable things with a newborn. So I spoke with Mr. Reisner earlier today during a telephone conversation. He had been meeting with the insurance companies. He did have some insurance. He and his wife did on the structure. The cause, as you heard Fire Chief Paul Howard say, is still unknown. Um, Steve was making some living arrangements. He was also going to be back on duty tomorrow and back at work. And it's then that we have scheduled a time to sit down and talk with him about the experience and about his plans. I also know that friends and or family have set up a, a fund me account or something of that nature on social media. I have some details on that. We'll talk with the fireman uh, about his loss and about his plans for moving forward on tomorrow night's program. More headlines, but while I've got a moment, let's tune in and see what's happening on tonight's McGoffin Farm Bureau community calendar. It kicks off with birthday wishes for Brittany Nicole Arms. With a whole lot of love from a whole lot of family and friends. Brittany Nicole Arms, happy, happy birthday. Don't forget about the next scheduled blood drive here in McGoffin County this Wednesday, 1230 to 5 in the McGoffin Medical Building behind the Sagersville Subway. All donators get a super cool My Blood Type is Wildcat Blue t-shirt. Two donors win a $25 Walmart gift card, and you can save a life, most importantly, by donating this Wednesday. The class of 1972 has a reunion meeting set for this coming Wednesday at 6 in the McGoffin County High School Library. All 1972 classmates are Welcome and encouraged to attend. If you have any questions, got a couple of classmates' phone numbers, 791-2384 and 496-6073. They're planning uh, their next reunion, and they need your input. The Kentucky Tree Recovery Campaign is coming up this Saturday at your McGoffa County Extension Service, and I will be talking to some folks about that this week in much more detail. It is a rain or shine event. Bring a shovel, plant some trees, take some home with you. Is it an effort to repopulate our tree population in communities and counties hit so hard by the March 2nd, 2012 tornado? 
And they're back at it again. They're not picking and grinning this Saturday night, but they're going to have family movie night at Kearney Free Will Baptist Church. They'll be showing Fireproof Saturday starting at 6. It's free, and Pastor Butch Whitaker invites everyone to come and join them for family movie night at Kearney Free Will this Saturday at 6 for a showing of Fireproof. And I've got some more details on the upcoming run for... Oh, didn't know that one was in there. By the way, fruit and vegetable plant orders can be made until March the 20th at your McGoffin County Extension Service. Call 349-3216. That is until one week from this Friday for fruit and vegetable plant orders at your Extension Service. Judy's Place for Kids is having a 1K walk and 5K run with a superhero theme. All proceeds from the race will benefit Judy's Place for Kids to continue providing services which promote safety, justice, hope, and healing for children with concerns of abuse. That is going to be April the 11th, Saturday, April the 11th. You can register by going to judysplace.org or 437-7447. I'll have that back for you for the next few days. It's the 8th annual such event. They hope to see a lot of run Runners or walkers or both, obviously. I'll get to that in a few days. Right now, quick reminder, all announcements, always free, and this is how you get them to us. Turning to funeral service announcements this Wednesday, 64-year-old Ressie Lou Hammond of Parkway Drive passed away Saturday, the daughter of the late Chapel Hammond and Edna Blankenship. Visitation is set for this evening and prior to services. They'll start in their honor tomorrow afternoon at 1 at the Bethlehem to Calvary Apostolic Church. That is at the church tomorrow at 1. Burial will be at the Allen Cemetery at Grape Creek. And the McGoffa County Funeral Home is in charge of all arrangements. Once again, in honor of 64-year-old Ressie Lou Hammond of Parkway Drive in Sagersville. And we're sad to hear the passing, passing of Buster Blanton, Ed Buster Blanton, was 81 when he passed away on today's date. Arrangements are still incomplete, but being made on behalf of the Magoffa County Funeral Home and to be announced soon by the family and Magoffa County Funeral Home. Buster Blanton passed away at the age of 81. I've got a job well done I want to tell you about this evening. I just got this press release from Della Menix at the Harold Whitaker Middle School academic team about an eighth grader there who is moving on up, moving on to the Governor's Cup State Finals in Louisville a little later on this month. So the young man you're about to see holding a little hardware is eighth grader Jesse Brown of the Harold Whitaker Middle School academic team. The team and Jesse recently competed at a regional competition. They placed in the top five in social studies. What's that mean? That means they bring home trophies. That also means Jesse will be competing in the Governor's Cup State Finals in Louisville, Kentucky. There's only one Louisville. March 14th, 15th, and 16th. This Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. We so appreciate Della keeping us in tune and update on all the accomplishments of the academic team and we wish them well. We wish Jesse well and the best of luck as he goes on to the Governor's Cup State Finals this coming weekend. Job well done and best of luck to you Jesse. I didn't have it in the community calendar, but Marlene Howard down at the McGoffa County Senior Citizen Center wants me to announce that they are wearing blue tomorrow on March the 10th in honor of Colon Cancer Awareness Month and invite everyone to do the same. And, you know, it's double duty. You could also chime in with support of your University of Kentucky Wildcats, who, by the way, I think play in the SEC 1 o'clock Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And I might be, might be uh, being a little bit presumptuous, but... I think I can go out in a limb on that one. But our McGoffa County Senior Citizen Center wearing blue tomorrow in honor of colon cancer awareness. Well, I'm cutting the show just a bit short <coughs> for obvious reasons. And as I said earlier, we have an interview with our local firemen uh, tomorrow and some other things set for then. I do want to make mention of high school basketball, and I stayed in because at the time I was fearful that I was actually going to have the full-fledged flu. And I didn't go to any games. I'm hoping that I'll take in the boys' championship at the very least. But just to let you know, the Johnson Central Lady Eagles did defeat Sheldon Clark in the championship round handily, 62-46 to in the final game over the course of the weekend. The actual championship game was just yesterday afternoon. And now they, of course, will advance on to the state tournament, the Sweet 16 in Bowling Green. 
best of luck to the ladies from Johnson Central. Now, the Girls Sweet 16 starts this Wednesday at noon. Johnson Central will take on Letcher County Central Thursday at noon. As for the boys, well, a few games underway. There, Sheldon and Clark over East Ridge, 52-38. Lawrence County, 100 over Allen Central, 81. Shelby Valley, 46, fell to Johnson Central. The boys winning 81-46 to over Shelby Valley. In the last first-round boys bracket was Pike County Central, 82, South Floyd, 51. So that sets up the following matchups in the boys' bracket. Sheldon Clark and Lawrence County will tip off tonight at 6.30. And then Johnson Central and Pike County Central make up the second semifinal round, game two at 8 o'clock tonight. And, of course, their championship will be tomorrow night. No, I'm not going tonight. Hopefully I will make it tomorrow. Now, also I found out today that in lieu of the fact of uh, their win and a few other situations. This was an announcement that I got to someone sent to me. Due to the girls at Johnson Central High School uh, competing in the Sweet 16 in Bowling Green and due to some of the buses involved uh, in the safe transportation of their athletes and students, it says that Johnson County Schools will be dismissing on this Thursday, the 12th. If the girls win on Thursday, they will play again on Friday, 6 o'clock, uh, and school will be dismissed at the following times, elementary at 1145 and middle and high at 12.05, I'm told. Also, the Johnson Central High School pep bus for the girls' game Thursday will leave at 6 a.m. Thursday morning from Central. Students must sign up at the school by noon this Wednesday if you want to go on the bus. Students will get breakfast at the school before loading on the buses, and school will provide lunch on the way to Bowling Green. Tickets are $10 at the school on sale now and $13 at the gate at Bowling Green. Pet buses will return to school between 10 and 11 Thursday night. Our last big update this evening is that of your weather forecast, which is going to be a wet one. Gosh, it was so gorgeous out there today. But two periods of heavy rain this week will lead to continued high water and possibly new flooding by the end of the week. That's right. Heavy rainfall likely across the viewing area on a couple of different occasions. One tonight through tomorrow, one to two inches of rain associated with this one. Clouds on the increase already this evening. Rain likely to set in after 5 o'clock in the morning. The second round of rain should move north into south central and eastern Kentucky Thursday morning and continue into Friday night. Another 1 to 2 inches possible with that system. And then, of course, there will be some areas who get in on maybe perhaps more than that. And it's actually all part of one big nasty wet system that's going to take its own sweet time rolling through eastern Kentucky and across elsewhere. Tomorrow we'll see 57 degrees. We'll see clouds, not any sun to speak of, but temperatures are favorable to say the very least. We're due for that 57 and only dropping down to 48 for nighttime lows. The first of those two rain events starting tonight, definitely into your tomorrow and tomorrow night will give us and I said one to two, and some areas might be closer to one and a half to two and a half inches of rainfall just for this first round. Keep that in mind. And that, of course, on top of an already well-saturated ground could mean some flooding issues. We'll keep our eye on that, as you should too, especially for those living in low-lying areas. Midweek, near 60 degrees. I'm just going to call it 60 because it's going to be close enough, albeit it's going to be cloudy and covered with showers, a low of 44. There's rain in the forecast each and every day. During the day Wednesday, not as much of the heavy rain that we're going to get into again later on, but rain in the forecast, 56 on your Thursday, more clouds, more showers, a low in the mid-40s on your Thursday. And keep in mind that into Friday nights when we'll see another big uh, rainmaker. Thursday night, showers again likely into your Friday. Temperatures still holding in the mid-50s, mid to upper 40s for nighttime lows. But more clouds, more rain, and more chances for flooding. Saturday into the weekend, more clouds, more chances of showers. We're talking about a 50% threat of rain on your Saturday with temperatures pushing the 60-degree mark once again, right at 58, 59 degrees. Temperatures falling to the low 40s. The coldest nighttime low that I've got in your entire forecast period is actually Sunday night when we see mostly cloudy skies and a low of 33 after 52 and partly sunny during the day on Sunday. Temperatures still holding into the 50s, though, for daytime highs thereafter. But for now, that is... <clears throat> my time i apologize for the cough uh be drinking plenty of water and hope to have that taken care of to some degree by the time i see you next join us for our exclusive interview with our local fireman who along with his wife and child lost everything in their structure fire and more news that you'll only see with me it all begins back here tomorrow night for more of your news today as always that's my time thank you so much for being a part of it good night <laughs>